Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockiner. Today's story is an update on Petya 2. If you follow my video, you know all about Petya 2, which I talked about yesterday. This is the new widespread ransom worm that started affecting a lot of Ukraine organizations and then continued to spread around the world. If you haven't heard of it, be sure to check out that video. Today, I just want to give you a quick update on Petya 2.0. Yesterday, I'd mentioned that researchers weren't absolutely sure of the infection vector, how Petya first started spreading. However, there were reports that sometimes it came as email with a word attachment that was actually malicious and leveraged an old office vulnerability. Today, there's been updates on another possible infection vector that was only an allegation yesterday. Yesterday, some researchers were pointing out a possible connection between Petya 2.0 and a popular accounting and tax software package that comes from a company called MeDoc or MEDoc. And this package is very popular with Ukrainian companies. Basically, they said that the update process seemed to be what started the initial Petya infections. Now, after that initial infection, Petya could continue to use Windows networking exploits or things like uh, credential stealing to continue to spread inside Windows networks. Yet the first infection might have come from this tax program. At the time, I didn't talk about this because MeDoc had posted a big Facebook advisory basically denying any association with Petya, saying that their software wasn't responsible. However, today, Microsoft released a very good technical blog post on Petya 2.0. Among other things, they claim to have found a direct connection between this software and the Petya 2 ransomware. Specifically, they show how the specific updater process for this software seems to have loaded the initial file that started a Petya 2.0 infection. Now, since then, MeDoc has posted another Facebook message denying Microsoft's issue too and telling you that pretty much uh, if a computer infected with MeDoc got Petya, it, any program, including MeDoc, could be used to start this sort of ransomware. Nonetheless, having Microsoft actually do code analysis and say that MeDoc could re be responsible for initial infections is very interesting. Another interesting twist to this is on MeDoc's site early yesterday, they had actually posted a quick note basically saying that their uh, network was under some sort of attack from viruses. That page has since been removed. It now only has a 404 error. But it's kind of weird that early in the day they had this post about a virus, but then later in the day they deny any claims that Petya 2 had anything to do with their software. In any case, it's hard to know who's telling the truth here or who's right yet, but it is kind of an interesting update. To imagine this ransomware started with a very very specific software package and the fact that it mostly affected the Ukraine seems to suggest that this particular ransomware author could have been targeting his victims, despite the fact that in the end, Petya 2.0 seemed to spread to many computers around the world. Now, there's one other Petya 2 update I want to give you that might save you if your computer does get infected. As I mentioned yesterday, when Petya 2 infects you, it starts a scheduled task, and anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour later, it reboots your computer. And this reboot is necessary for it to complete its infection of your master boot record. However, when this reboot first happens, one window that will pop up before the ransom message is a fake window talking about check disk. If you're a Windows user and ever uh, rebooted your computer in a weird way, you sometimes get to a DOS boot screen where it talks about it's running check disk to make sure your file system is still good. Petya 2.0 will actually use this fake message while it's trying to overwrite the rest of your MBR. The point is, if you see a weird check disk message during a reboot, it might be a good time to turn off your computer. According to at least one researcher, if you actually turn off your computer before this check disk message disappears, your files won't be encrypted, and then you can use a system restore disk to get back into it. So that's just one final chance if you do infect yourself where you might be able to save your files. In any case, I just thought the MeDoc update was interesting. I'm still not sure if it's conclusive that this is the initial infection vector, but it's kind of an interesting drama between serious researchers at Microsoft and the company that's denying this. In any case, we'll continue to follow the story and we'll update you if anything relevant comes to light. That's it for today's news. Thanks for watching.